Our quarter turn valves need actuators to operate. So we're going to learn about how these devices operate and why they are needed for butterfly valves. We're going to learn about torque and what it means. We're going to learn about various types of actuators. And finally, we're going to conclude by looking at power actuators. First, torque. Torque is defined as a twisting force or turning force. It's found by multiplying the force by the distance. In the picture on the right, you can see one hand, hand A, is pulling on the wrench at 20 pounds over a distance of one feet. That produces a torque of 20 times one or 20 foot pounds. Hand B has a force of 10 pounds over a distance of two feet. 10 times two is 20. So it also is producing 20 foot pounds of torque. Our valves require a lot of torque to operate. A four inch plug valve requires 190 foot pounds to unseat the valve. A 20 inch plug valve requires 5,300 foot pounds to unseat the valve. The four inch valve would need 80 pounds pull on that lever, on a lever that's 2.4 feet long. A 20 inch plug valve requires 80 pounds of pull on a 66 foot long lever. Hence, we need actuators. Talking a little bit about torque, there's two types of torque. The first is the brake torque, which is the torque required to unseat the valve or start to close it. The second torque is the run torque, which is the torque needed to move the valve through mid travel as a result of fluid flow. The brake torque consists of the seating torque, some bearing friction, friction from the packing, and some hydraulic forces due to the water pressure on the valve when it's in the closed position, and the offset torque on eccentric valves like the plug valve. The running torque is consists of the flowing torque. Also, there's bearing friction, and you also have to uncome the, overcome the packing torque. There are many types of actuator designs. We want to talk about at least two of them. Our plug valves usually get a worm gear. A worm gear consists of a large segment gear and a small gear that drives it called the worm. It provides a constant mechanical advantage during its entire stroke. As you turn the worm about 20 times, the main gear rotates about 90 degrees to operate the ball butterfly or plug valve. On the bottom of the screen is the traveling nut. When you turn the screw rod, a nut on those threads go up and down, which operate levers, which in turn rotate the output shaft 90 degrees. On any of these gears, we can also put external gears or auxiliary gears, such as a spur gear, a bevel gear. Bevel gears are interesting that the two shafts are 90 degrees apart from each other, so it also changes the location of the hand wheel on an actuator. Similarly, a miter gear does, but a miter gear has a one-to-one -one ratio. All of our actuators have a torque rating, and it consists and is based on one of two factors. One is just the physical strength of the housing of the actuator and the internal mechanisms, or two, by how much torque it can generate. Knowing that a person can only put 80 pounds rim pull on a hand wheel or 150 foot pounds on a nut, given the ratios was inside the gear, it would only produce so much torque on a valve. Our most common actuator on a butterfly valve is called the traveling nut actuator, which we make in four sizes, LS1234. It consists of a ductile iron housing, the threaded stem, and a nut that travels back and forth to drive the slotted lever. When mounting an LS actuator on a butterfly valve, it's important to understand the rotation of the actuator and how to mount it. Basically, the standard position is when you're looking at the valve at the seat on the left, the hand wheel should be facing you. Sales may specify a 90 degree position or 180 degree position, and you would mount it as shown in this diagram. A worm gear actuator is used on many of our plug valves and some butterfly valves. They are also are often equipped with spur gears to provide additional mechanical advantage. 
They consist of a sealed housing, a hardened steel worm, which drives the main segment gear through the 90 degrees of travel. This particular worm gear example shows a two inch A1 nut to drive the gear instead of a hand wheel. The, the complete motion is controlled by two stop bolts on the bottom, which are easily externally adjustable, so that depending on how you set those, the valve will be precisely placed in its seat or precisely placed at full open. Similar to the LS actuator, the worm gear actuators have to be mounted in a particular orientation. It's similar to the LS actuator. When you're looking at the valve in the seat on your left, you want the hand wheel facing you. Here's an example of a 16 inch plug valve with a worm gear actuator and a yellow hand wheel. Valves actuators can also be equipped with power actuators. This is becoming quite common in the industry because water plants and wastewater plants are more often being controlled by computers instead of operators. They can be operated with electric motors or air cylinders, water cylinders, or oil cylinders as shown in the lower picture. On the upper left is a motor actuator. So we'll put 220 volts to that motor. And when someone pushes a button, the valve will go open or close through its 90 degrees of travel. Or as I said, it can be controlled by a computer. On the lower right is a cylinder actuator, which this one is powered by air on one side and there's a large spring on the other so that if the air power is ever lost or electrical power is lost, the valve will automatically either fully open or fully close depending on how it was assembled. We buy electric motor actuators from many standard manufacturers, including Alma, EIM, Rotorque, and Limitorque. We don't have a, any favorites. They usually bid on a job and the lowest bidder would get the project. They can be powered on many different kinds of voltages. So when they're tested in the shop, a special equipment is needed to supply the correct voltage to operate the electric motor. Motors come in two different functions. One can be open and close, or second, it can be modulating. Modulating means when you give it a four to 20 milliamp signal, it will position the valve proportional to that signal. When we put an electric motor actuator on a valve, we have to set it up properly for the valve. We set the mechanical stops for the overall travel but then the electrical power has to be controlled with adjustable limit switches to shut the motor off when the valve reaches the open and close position. And there's also a torque switch, which is a protective device. In case there's debris in the valve, it will protect the valve from damage due to the motor if there's an over torque situation. There are new designs of electric motor actuators called non-intrusive, which means you do not need to open the housing of the motor to set the limit switches or the torque switches. They're operated by a handheld device as shown here. We buy and we also make cylinder actuators. We buy them from Morin, Bettis, Triac, and Rotorque. And similar to motors, we don't really have a preference. It's whatever our customer recommends that we use on a particular project. A cylinder actuator provides or converts air power, water power, or oil power into pistons, which in turn drive a lever for 90 degrees of rotation to operate the butterfly ball or plug valve. In this particular diagram on the lower left, you can see that the cylinder is set up so that we can inject air, oil, or water on either end of the piston and drive it back and forth. Similar to motors, cylinders can be set up for simple on-off service or they can modulate based on a 4 to 20 milliamp signal with a position and device and they can be used to control a pump flow with these types of devices. Here's an example of our 12 inch ball valve with a cylinder actuator. 
which he, we use to cycle the valve back and forth 10,000 times to qualify the valve for the American Water Works Association standard. Cylinder actuators can also be equipped with manual overrides. It could be a hydraulic manual override. It could be a hand pump, or as I said before, a spring assembly to automatically close the valve on loss of electrical power. We also sometimes use a sandwich declutch worm gear, which is mounted between the cylinder actuator and the valve, so that if you lose your hydraulic power, you can engage the worm on this device and operate the valve independently of the cylinder actuator. This is an example of a large butterfly valve with an LS4 actuator and handwheel. I hope you enjoyed learning about valmatic actuators.